Nike, 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 Nike collab. So, Nike have been fucking ramping up the collaborations lately, right? And I'm sure most of you guys have noticed. Um, everyone, everyone and their mum is getting a fucking Nike collaboration, right? It's just coming, they come, they're just fucking pumping them out. It seems if every influencer that has got any kind of clout online or any sort of following or influencers kind of being tapped in to get another collaboration. If you're Gary Vaynerchuk, you're going to be like, oh, oh, duh, this should happen ages ago. If you're a savvy consumer, you might think they're kind of oversaturating the market somewhat. Um, you kind of feel as if like, you know, some of them are, you know, worthy of collaborations on them makes sense, but then some of it kind of, it's a bit weird. Look at it. Like, you know, um, you look at it like, Hmm, what's that all about? Like the Nigel Sylvester and Jordan brand collaboration. You know, he's a he's been a force of nature on the BMX. Um, someone has probably single-handedly um, taken BMX culture and made it pop overall. Um, but should he be having a Jordan brand collaboration? I don't know. Um, should it look the way it looked? I don't know. Whatever it may be. But then on the back of it, everyone else is getting collaborations. But I think the good thing about it, the great thing, I think, in general, is that Nike have finally started to realize that a lot of their power and influence comes from these influencers or leaders within their own little um you know area of expertise kind of championing their products and also having a say in what they do for the future now nike have one of the best innovation labs in the world right some of the shoes that they come out with are just insane you only have to look at the nike reacts lately and just think you know no other brand in the world could make that shoe right and make it and make it pop as it did right in such an organic way where every model that comes out um sub sub subsequently has been sold out uh, i think the undercover version haven't even come out yet right the react 87s and the chuckers now are now becoming a bit of a thing that people are wearing i'm seeing a lot of people post out online and the nike 2 the nike air 2 270 was another good example nike can just make great shoes right but they also need um, um key figures within the culture or within the scene to also champion them. So the only way to kind of get these guys on board is to kind of allow them in-house and allow them to kind of make some stuff, right? Because back in the day, they will kind of shun people away and just give seed them products. But that's not enough, right? People want some type of ownership. People want to have their name added onto the creative timeline or whatever this thing is that we call the scene. They want to be, they want to go from being a consumer to being a maker. They want to go from being, you know, want someone standing in line to being the one conducting the line. People want involvement. And the way to kind of, and also the way to kind of sell products um, in a very crude sense is to get the people that um, the kind of buyers look up to and get them to kind of do collaborations or front collaborations. That's a way to kind of sell loads of products. So selling faceless product um, is only going to work so much, but getting, you know, reputable people such as Tom Sachs, such as Virgil um, to be involved or such as Matthew Williams from At Alix to kind of get involved. So you get people to do a collaboration is only going to add to the law of what Nike are, are doing. And this season or this year has not been any any different. And we've seen uh, collaborations now, automation. we've seen a collaboration leaked or rumoured, or sorry, teased from Yoon of Ambush. We've seen Heron Preston's doing collaboration, which is really interesting because he's not even doing shoes, he's doing sunglasses. We've seen a Cold War doing a collaboration with um, shoes and clothing. We've seen Fear of God doing the same thing. We've seen Martin Rose so far uh, show us a track jacket. Um, we've, we heard there's rumours supposedly of a whole conglomerate of other ladies involved in the uh, fashion industry or in the streetwear or in the scene industry getting involved in doing some collaborations such as uh, Sarah um, Edelman a former formerly known as Sarah Collette doing a collaboration Virgil supposedly signed on to do more collaboration with Nike it's great to see but the funny thing is that maybe this has all come as a head um, off the back of the whole uh, uh, debacle with Kanye Kanye, for all the ills and wrongs that he's done, I think for the scene overall, he's been an absolute force of nature. He's allowed so many people to actually have a career within the scene, right? He's been instrumental in getting people positions, in, in giving them platforms. Um, he's just been a great force that people only, haven't really realised. We only realised, you know, in times gone by, just how much he's done for the scene overall. But I think letting, letting Kanye go to Nike was probably one of Nike's biggest missteps ever in the history of the brand. Like, it goes without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, their their uh, relationship was strained. Yes, Kanye is not probably the easiest person to work with, especially during that time when he was going through a lot of conflicts because he wasn't necessarily getting 
the creative freedoms that he wants. He wasn't necessarily getting the monetary rewards that he thought his talents deserved, which kind of created a lot of anxiety, a lot of turmoil, which we kind of saw come to head when he went on that Zane Lowe interview. He felt like he was owed a lot more than what he was given. Um, he was creating work at the highest level and he wasn't necessarily getting compensated for it or, or rewarded well for it. And Nike were kind of kind of caught in a crossfires um, for, the, for, for, the, for the most part of it, right? It wasn't necessarily their fault. It was just They just came around the wrong sort of time. But letting go, letting go of Kanye or letting him go to their bitter rivals hey, this was a big 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 fuck up and what they couldn't afford to happen was for Kanye to dictate the conversation and to make it seem as if Nike were the bad guys and everyone to be like fuck Nike fuck Nike and then for all the influence and all the brand people to go you know what I'm not wearing Nikes and I'm going to burn my Nikes and follow Kanye or follow whoever other influencer anywhere else but Nike and that could have easily happened right the industry has that power if Nike kept shitting on influencers and not and not giving them a chance to do collaborations that weren't just changing colorways and wouldn't give an opportunity to kind of do um to kind of you know talk on panels or to kind of be consultants if if nike wouldn't give these kids the the that open the door to them they could have revolted quite easily and just kind of you know killed that brand overnight it, it, i know it sounds crazy it sounds out of the world but honestly i think nike recognized just how much power they have as a brand and how much power these collective influencers all over the world have as a brand and just bringing it together would just it's just a no-brainer especially the ones especially the brands that they've collaborated with, i've read off they've all got rep in the scene they've all people that everyone kind of by the, by the most part everyone everyone kind of rates everyone respects they've kind of paid their dues they put in their ten thousand hours they're all creating very unique and amazing and plus when i think about it too that list is fucking amazing because none of those brands are the same like none of them are the same like not even close they all look completely different from their color palettes to their design codes um to just their general aesthetic like it's all completely different so it was only it, it just made sense oh and i didn't even mention matthew williams for leaks he's got a collaboration coming out too like it only made sense to kind of get that to align that power with those influences and so far we haven't seen a lot we haven't seen the full range i think except for maybe hair and press in the cold war and for hero god i want to quickly go through some of the stuff that i thought was quite cool um so far i think yoon's been kind of teasing some of the stuff that she's been doing with her brand with her collaboration that looks amazing and i think it's a good it's a good as well um she's quite a good person especially for the women in the street where we were usually underrepresented i think she's a good person also to kind of spearhead one of the first collaborations to drop out of that kind of uh conglomerate or that kind of group because she's got a very particular aesthetic too she's somebody that's been involved in the scene for such a long 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 time and I just think in general, she's going to approach it in a more interesting way than, you know, your conventional, you know, um, trainers and, you know, supreme cap wearing person would. So I'm I'm eager to see the stuff that she's going to put out. And so far, um, looking at the teasers, it all looks very, very interesting. Most of it is from stuff that I've seen on Instagram. So uh, please bear with me. But yeah, uh, this first piece that I saw on Instagram looked very, very cool. What was it? Get this up here so you've got oh why didn't it come up here weird okay let's do this one this is the profile you so you got this that I thought looked pretty cool and I, I, I saw the trainers too i don't know what the trainers are meant to look like but this looks fucking cool so it's like a, it looks like a some track pants with some elastic at the back and free and piping going all the way around um which is awesome. I love that she used um, Ambush as well because I'm assuming that's the jewelry line name, right? Um, that she um, runs with her husband Verbal, who we don't really see that much of these days, isn't it? I, I wonder what's happening there. Um, but um, hopefully he's involved in the collaboration somewhat. But that looks pretty cool. Those piping and those pants, that three M hit looks fucking amazing. Um, again for the for the ladies or even for the fellas, that would be pretty cool to wear. And nowadays everyone is wearing. Everyone's kind of mixing and blending of the clothings anyway these days. A lot of people have to thank Celine for that as well, isn't it? There was an era where, you know, it was really for par to wear women's clothing, to get it in your size. Nowadays, like, guys are, ex you know, going out and buying size 14, size 16 um, jackets or blouses from, you know, w uh, ladies' brands and wearing them because they're just far more interesting to wear than men's clothing sometimes. Um, so that looked pretty cool, that track pant and long sleeve combo there. Then we've got some new bits too. That's she, a Yoon preview too recently. Um, hopefully, um, that I love that chain. Um, I know Virgil done something similar as well with his Louis Vuitton collection. Um, and she's got the trainers there stacked, right? They're kind of, they sort of look a bit of like a sock with like a 180 saw, I'm assuming there with that bubble. 
And again, the piping too looks amazing. So I can't wait to see that. That shirt's going to fucking fly out. If that's a shirt, that's going to that's gonna fly. So it's like a snaggy swoosh with like ambush written on the bottom. That's going to be such an easy uh, such an easy sell. And according to some of the stuff I saw on Cold War retail store, some of the stuff is priced pre pretty well, this night collaboration. So they're doing a good job in how they're pricing the stuff as well. I've got to be honest. And then um, this might be the trainers. Which I'm not too sure what the trainers are. Again, I'm not too sure what the trainers are going to be. But they look very interesting too. So again, like a kind of sock shoe. Um, it looks like it's got 180 sole according to the 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 sole that I saw earlier, but I'm not too sure. So I'm eager to see what that looks like. So that's one collaboration that we've got coming up very, very soon that I'm looking forward to seeing. And then the other one um, here that I'm just going to actually get up and load because I think it might be a little more interesting to talk about um, was the Heron Preston collaboration. Um, who's, you know, I think it's fair to say, I think he'd be fair to admit who's kind of had a meteoric rise. Um, someone who hasn't necessarily come from, he hasn't necessarily approached the scene as a, you know, my dream is to become, you know, the creative director of Louis Vuitton. Because I think even Virgil probably wouldn't admit it now because, you know, he's a little bit more um, stoic um, uh, nowadays than, than he may have been in his earlier career. But, you know, so Virgil's Virgil obviously a very driven guy and had some very set plans and he'd heard about where he saw his career going. And I think Louis Vuitton was probably one of the stepping stones he had to kind of go even further than that. But Heron Preston always felt like somebody like to me anyway, um, somebody that kind of like, like me, put, like me in some cases, who just kind of wanted to turn their lifestyle into a job, right? So it's kind of that kind of Aaron Bondaroff uh, method, uh, mantra where you just kind of want to turn your everyday lifestyle, the things that you do, the cool stuff that you get into, just get paid for it. And if that meant you were doing fashion, if that meant you were directing movies, if that meant you were making books, if that meant you were um, running an art gallery, if that meant you were making capsule collections, whatever it meant, like, it just meant just like surviving or living in the world and being free to travel and hang out with your friends by doing the stuff that you love to do. Um, and um, Heron Preston's kind of done that, but it's kind of gone weirdly. It's, it's, it's gone even more well than he would have ever imagined, where he's been now become a quasi ambassador for sustainable fashion. He now has his own brand with a, with a, with another kind of um sub label brand i forgot the name of it it kind of is uh basketball skateboards kind of like you know you can call it um you can call it a subsidiary but you can maybe call it a, a, just a brand in itself that he kind of also runs now that's sold in selfridges so he's kind of gone he's could he's run the whole gamut and now news has kind of come out recently on high piece he's opened his first retail store in hong kong which is fucking insane as well to see like it's just gone exponentially well for him but his collaboration is quite interesting because um, he could have easily you know made a whole collection of clothing or of shoes or trainers like air force ones that he's always wearing and all that sort of malarkey but he decided to um, he decided to do sunglasses so he tried to take a completely different tact on it and you know uh, reintroduced these uh, sunglasses and i thought this story that he posted on his instagram was quite endearing actually of the whole journey of the creative journey you know sometimes these things doesn't feel like it's worth it it feels like you're doing something and no one's fucking listening or it feels as if you're, you're kind of running in mud but you know the if the end goal is somehow to kind of turn back around then you know in 10 years time be working for your former employer be working alongside your former employer as a partner making your own uh, sunglasses it's fucking cool so he says this story i post i'm gonna post up here from instagram that i thought was very very interesting um which is the following as you can see here i think that's his dog that used to have i think it might have died i think maybe i think that might be the one though remember the, the big doggies always talk about but yeah so this is the, this is the kind of post that he posted on Instagram recently. I'm Heron Preston. You can follow him at Heron Preston, all one word on Instagram. It says the following. I think that's interesting. I think that what's interesting about my my story of being one of Nike's newest collaborations is the fact that I actually used to work for the company eight years ago. That trans that translation from fan to employee changed my perspective of Nike and its products. Once I started to learn more about their philosophy, dedication to innovation, and focus on the athlete, Nike is a sneaker famous brand. And when I worked there, my curiosity exploded. I wanted to discover more of what the brand had to offer beyond footwear one of those products i discovered and fell in love with were the nike tailwind performance glasses i wore them nearly every day they had interchangeable lenses with different colors and felt so innovative to me i was actually um hyped on something that wasn't a sneaker for once this is why i decided that for my first collaboration with nike wasn't going to be a sneaker or apparel but an accessory laser focused on the very same style of glasses that made me proud to work for such an ambitious and fearless company i'm happy to announce that of november 2000 november 20 29th 2018 the world will finally get to experience the nike tailwind hp performance sunglasses dropping worldwide amazing no what an amazing story man so you get to see loads of pictures from him from old wearing the sunglasses and they should be coming out very very soon they look fucking banging 
like so 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 banging um i can't wait to see what they look like in irl uh again could have easily done some shoes and trainers right and they would have sold like fucking hotcakes instead he decides to design these amazing sunglasses so they look fucking amazing i can't wait to see them in real life and again if they're able to kind of drop in all these um great activation pieces on running and shit or just of living in general and living a creative life that'd be a, such a cool thing i think it'd be a much cool thing than just the clothing overall but yeah just amazing man i love it i fucking love it i absolutely love it i can't to get my hands on them hopefully i'll be able to get a pair but i'm assuming just because they're glasses and they're not trainers and stuff and it'll be something easy to do and again i love the codes you know everyone everyone's embedding their design codes into design like you know the tips he's got his obviously the style written in um, russian lyric written on the inside of the case and the tips of the sunglasses or oh, what the tips they call sunglasses i don't know what that bit of it's called are in his signature kind of orange so yeah very 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 well done collaboration overall and i can't wait to again like i said see that shit in irl and this is it shown in the um, fashion show just passed recently as well so they look really cool here as well so yeah so probably there'll probably be some early samples that they were debuting on the runway so that should be pretty cool to see um so yeah her impressions with collaborations i absolutely loved i thought that was absolutely amazing um and then another one where i thought that was very very special was a cold war um i'm a big fan of um, samuel ross i think he's probably one of, one of a very 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 special individual that we have um gracing our streetwear scene climate at the moment um he's got a very very particular point of view that he's coming from he's got a very particular aesthetic the way he kind of runs his business overall the way that crew moves as a unit is very admirable i just think they're, they're just very very interesting company to come from and i just think there's so much more scope that they have to um, there's so much room they have to grow that it's just scary how big they could end up being especially when you think about where they come from right um when it comes from you know seeing videos of um, samuel ross dipping dip dying shoes into a big bucket of ink in, in color dye in order to kind of have them ready for a runway collection like insane to see how far they've progressed from that to the recent one where they had like a performance art piece of a guy sort of exploding you know out of this like um fake box thing like it's just fucking insane to see that happening but yeah so he made a collaboration too of a cold war that was full clothing and shoes which looked absolutely banging and very very on brand with everything that a cold will do again something that's probably in development for a very very long time i'm assuming because it was done in a very 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 cool way so these pictures over here from hype from high snobiety but i'm putting them here on screen so you guys can see hopefully let me lower this down a little bit so yeah i thought this all looked really really amazing boom 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 so you got that yeah some nice pants um again some little nice signature or cold wool pieces here where well, the back is shorter than the front little cinches here and there on the sleeves you've got module uh, would you call it i'll call it modular design right modular design where you can kind of tear off pieces and add them onto different pieces of, of other clothing that you have attached to it with velcro or clips or buttons and stuff nice sort of branding on the, on the outside um and the trainers just look so banging nice little coat there again nice big fat pockets another pockets around remind me of that whole aesthetic with that um cold wool do their jackets reminds me of that interview i remember reading from um rick owens where he mentioned that all these jackets and coats that he makes he tries to make the pockets of the jackets big enough to fit um a sandwich in a book you know just the kind of essentials that an every an everyday urbanite would need you know traversing the city and i think and i feel that sometimes a cold wool do the same sort of thing like the, the the pockets are just obscenely they're, 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 they're kind of big that i like right where because i always carry shit on me so you know you've got like you've got enough room here to fit a book enough room to here to fit a sandwich to fit a drink you know a couple of protein bars whatever like just love the little nods in there. there has to be something something has to i'm sure sammy has some sort of influence in that in how big the, the pockets are and, and the functionality behind it because that's really really cool i love that um what do we have here and then we have another jacket too with a nice sort of extension bit at the bottom there very very nice um kind of reminds me a little bit of what um the work that Ashimaki does on so jacket sometimes too or he does there with nice caps and yeah overall just a banging collection from a cold war very 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 well made and this is a new logo and i've not seen this before oh no they've done soon before so sort of like a cold wall with a regular font but kind of elongated and stretched out really really cool man I love it overall. 
And again, just goes to show, just given the resources, like a Cold War's production or manufacturing story has improved so much, especially on the back of the investment that they received recently. Um, you you can see already in the last two runway shows that they put together and some of the lookbooks and stuff. Um, you can see the fin the kind of finish has really really improved. Um, and again, just give these guys, give these talented dudes resources, give them the ability to create, and they will knock out the park. And you know. You, you give them the keys to the Nike factory and you can just bring out this collection. It's not, I'm not surprised. But yeah, again, it's just super, super good. That entire look is amazing on this lady. Like, so good. So, so good. Jacket with buttons that open up on the sleeve. Um, it looks like this long sleeve top might be thermal, so it might be a good a top to wear when running and stuff. Just absolutely love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And the trainers, of course, are absolutely amazing. Trainers are so, so good. I think they come out today, actually, in Dover Street. Um, so if you've entered the raffle, good luck to you. But yeah, the, the kind of off-white color is definitely the one to get after you kind of beat those in after a while. They'll definitely turn them good. But then that black is just insane, isn't it? It kind of looks like an initial. You remember that Anish Kapoor ink that he bought? Where it was like the truest black. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Just how black it, just how black it looks in this photo. It's insane. It's just literally pitch black. Like they really ramped up the tone on that one, but yeah, the the, the off white cell kind of colorway is the one I'd like. Cause after a while, beating that in a bit it reminds you a little bit of the Tom Sachs colorway, where you wear that in a while and it just it just improve over time, x than tenfold. So yeah, absolutely smashed it. So that was a collaboration I absolutely loved. Um, there again, and um, yeah, man, the whole collections are all awesome. I can't wait to see them come out. There's probably a few more that we're gonna see that we haven't seen so far. We have to kind of wait with bated breath. To see those collections um but yeah nike are doing the, are doing a good job man they got the right people um to take part in these collaborations they've given them the room to create they haven't necessarily just given them a shoe to color to just change the colorway of and i just think nowadays this level of this these levels of tastemakers influencers designers culture kids just won't accept having colorway changes anyway they, they won't accept that they want they want to have they'd much rather die on their sword trying to do something and just changing the colorway they're not going to just want to take an air force one and make it black they're going to want to do more than that and even in air force one they're going to try and do some sort of tooling change right where they're going to change the components of the midsole they're going to take off a few um like even your cold will do with, with their air force one that's due to come out right where you know they're minus some minus some eyelets um they're going to want to change a, a model and just kind of, you know, really make it their own for the most part. And that's something that I'm really, really um, envious of seeing with these kids going coming up. And I hope in the future I also get opportunity to do the same thing with my own uh, collection. That would be fucking awesome, innit?